as a kid, I was just too anxious, too worried what people would think about me, and I had no skill, or I wouldn't fit in. But you know, if I could go back and turn back the clock, I'd be saying, go for it, like you know. And you know, people are very supportive, and people will watch your back, and people will be there and give you the support that you need. talk for a very important topic, GEA for all. So Connor, you have been a uh, part of the, the Leinster squad, so you have played in the wheelchair hurling. What experience had, had you so far? I came across it through basketball, and because um, I had known people playing it, and I had never really looked into it or anything, and as soon as I came, everyone was so inclusive and welcoming, and that what, that's what kept me playing. What would you, Kevin? Oh uh, yeah, my kind of work with, with sport has been kind of the me uh, PR media side of things and doing media work with Stephen Gleeson and Tib FM and you know behind the microphone uh, for big championship matches and so. it's been a good opportunity and everyone's kind of been very welcoming and you know they've seen that I had a talent so they you know uh, it's all about trying to find your niche. You yourself um, didn't play really that much uh, no. football or hurling but no. you, you you came involved in helping out in yeah. other capacities and you you were in integrated in the club. I guess like being autistic as a young child like I didn't really feel like I was belonged you know in a team sport I wasn't good at making friends I wasn't you know as a teenager it was challenging it was you know, everyone finds it challenging. It's not, you know, people with disabilities or, you know, autism or whatever. But, you know, I'd hope that more people in the future will, who have disabilities or who have, you know, needs as well, that, you know, from a young age, if you can get them involved and, and be part of the club or community, that, you know, they'll learn the skills and be able to play for the club or have some capacity in, in that role. That's what I'd hope that, you know, the, this campaign and, you know, community includes everyone. And, you know, that's to see it growing. And uh, over the last couple of years, you know, it has made progress, but there's more that can be done and you need more kind of role models out there playing at the highest level and talking about their experience. You know, it's about breaking barriers and it's about seeing, you know, what's the next thing, what else can you achieve like? And probably from a coaching perspective then, Paul, you're involved with, with your club uh, coaching helping the wee ones, so yeah. I don't do nearly as much coaching as I'd like, because I'm sure obviously playing into county football, but I got a bit of help from this man. <laughs> I, I brought him down to the, oh, yeah, the big yeah, bad yeah. town of Balna, and he came down and helped us with Super Values Aid last year. Great um, experience. Was, wasn't oh, it? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we had a wonderful day, um, and that was like just another step forward that every club could kind of do. We're fortunate now to have the back in the Super Value. We had a load of autistic young people, kids with different physical disabilities. It was open to everybody, wasn't it? Mm, and yeah, like, it really was. Very open day, very, yeah. you know, community-based. So is this is something that clubs, future clubs could go and, and do and organise maybe for... Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's a template there, and in fairness, we're, we're fortunate with the GEA. The GEA have the all-star teams. They do GEA for all. It's not, like, it's not like you're reinventing the wheel here. Do you know what it takes? It takes one or two good volunteers to get behind each other and go, do you know what we're going to do? We're going we're gonna to try and provide this for the community. As I said, mm. I got help from the best. <laughs> I did. I was very fortunate to bring in some great people, and we made it happen. And do you know what? Of all the things, I think, that happened last year, that's the one thing that stands out to me. Uh, we just had... All the kids, smiles on their faces, and they got to try something that they may have never experienced before. But from a parent's perspective, yeah, that's how important thing. is that? Yeah, like I suppose I would, I've been involved in coaching and I'm, I'm kind of like the token dad that gets dragged into everything, you know. I would have been involved in the GA from a very young age. When Connor was born, I suppose you always have these kind of ideas that you're going to know, he's going to play inter-county football and he's going to do this, that and the other. I suppose our story changed, Connor's story changed. But what was great for me, I suppose, on my own personal journey was to see the difference that days like that can make. When you see kids that are in, in included and involved fully, and they feel like they're part of the community and part of the team and part of an organization, it has a huge effect on them. You know, their mental health, their well-being, their, obviously their physical well-being. I think ultimately, though, it boils down to the element of fun. I'll coach anybody and I'll drive them anywhere, anytime, day or night, if it's fun for him. No one wants to play anything if they're not, if they're not having fun. And again, it's not all about winning. Sometimes that's part of it if you're lucky. Once you're involved and you feel like you're part of it, then that's as much fun as it can yeah. be like. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just keep making it enjoyable, keep making it fun. Just like keep them coming back with a smile on their face and we're doing our job like. If everyone rose in behind it, you know, good things can happen. Yeah, made a good few friends.
Being involved with this campaign, like, you know, and you have got friends and people that I've kept in contact with, you know, and friendship and, and looking out for one another, you know, that's, that's very important. Do you think there's a fear factor there for new coaches or coaches that's not familiar with the diverse needs of a group? hundred percent. It is a barrier for people trying to get involved because they feel there's other people know better. You'll never know until you, until you actually engage in it. You're never going to learn until you fail. You have to kind of be a little bit vulnerable in that and go, you know what, I'm just willing to get involved and I'm willing to fail and I'm willing to learn. As a kid, I was just too anxious, too worried what people would think about me and I had no skill or I wouldn't fit in. But, you know, if I could go back and turn back the clock, I'd be saying, go for it, like, you know, and, you know, people are very supportive and people will watch your back and people will be there and give you the support that you need. Yeah, you certainly made up for it, boy. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. Right.